everyone, welcome back to KTV. My name's Nelson. And my name is Hannah, and we are here with our episode of Epic, Epic Creation. Creation. Yeah, so this week I thought we'd um, take a book out of the science route. Yeah, yeah. So we have three epic creations, all science experiments today. Um, Hannah, for the first one, yeah. uh, all you'll need are these things. Beautiful. So you just need some bicarb soda and some shaving cream, shaving foam, foam. Not gel uh, apparently, no gel. no gel. I thought we could make this, um, Oh, actually, let's just make it and then we'll see if the audience can guess what we make. Sounds yeah, good? Yeah, okay, sounds awesome. good. Let's do it. So, um, we've got our mixing buckets here. And for this one, shake up your shaving cream and a um, whole bag of bicarb soda. Yeah, maybe be careful opening this one if you're doing this. Lucky we've got apron now. Yes. Oh, yeah, we've got a camera up there now. Take them up! Oh. oh. <laughs> The smell is truly something, isn't it? There's a lot of smells. I think mine's lemon and lime flavour. Yeah, mine's just generic smell. Generic. I think I have to do it down here. Oh, there's a hole in the bucket. We may need to speed this one up. I need more bicarb. Oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. Yes, mate! Whoa! Um, Hannah, what did you make? I made snow. Snow! Did you make snow, Nelson, or has no, yours turned into something cream. else? There's a lot of shaving cream in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we've done some mixing. Took a lot of mixing, as you can see. Um, we're gonna lift the bucket and we'll see what we made. Okay. One, two, three, ta-da! Oh, Hannah. Oh, I made- What would you say we made? <laughs> I made, well, snow, but a snowman with a little a little hat and a nose. What's yours? Um, I tried making a snail. It's been a bit <laughs> slow, but- well, <laughs> well, do you know what? Um, <laughs> Before we, before we go to segment, I thought I'd quickly tell you what we just made. We actually made like an insoluble solid, which comes from the shaving cream and the bicarb soda, right? And, and, um, it, and science happens. Science happens. Science Indeed. happens. Indeed. Well, make sure if you do want to try this one at home, you let mum and dad know you borrowed the shaving cream. Yeah, that might be bad. all the bicarb soda at home. Otherwise, Ooh. no taste. All right. So, we'll see you soon. See you soon, guys. Hey everyone and welcome back to Bible Trivia. I'm your new host, Rachel, and I am joined by two lovely guests today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, Nelson, you go first. Oh, I'm Nelson. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Hannah. Hi. Hello. Amazing. KTV hosts go head to head on this week's episode. So, Bring it on. are you guys ready? Yes. yes. All right. Your first question is... Yes, I'm ready. Good practice. Uh, your first question is, how much bread and fish did Jesus use to feed more than 5,000 people? <laughs> Two fish, five loaves. Correct. I feel like you do have to wait for the question to finish, but you know. I'll oh, we'll see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what did Jesus do at the Last Supper to his disciples? <laughs> Wash their feet. Correct. <gasps> well done. Tied game. I was gonna say pray. Uh, yeah. I was like <laughs> broke the bread, <laughs> they passed the drinks. <laughs> uh, probably quite a few things that he did. <laughs> Uh, what Israelite saved her people from being murdered and was a wife of the king? Esther. Yes, good job, Nelson. Thank you. Our favourite. Uh, Ruth is good too. Ruth is good too. Ruth is good too. Uh, what did Jacob give Joseph that sparked jealousy from his siblings? Technicolor coat. Mm, we have a coat Rainbow of many coat. colours red coat hair, but we'll colors. take it. Rainbow coat. And they're socks. They're socks. Just sing one for us, Nelson. Jacob, Jacob, <laughs> <laughs> um, what did Saul throw to try and kill David? Is it a dagger? Not a dagger. Oh. oh. A 
sword, spear. A spear is correct. Ah. <laughs> I think we're still tied, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, what this is yeah. maybe a bit more of a challenging one. Uh, who wrote <laughs> the book of Galatians? Your turn. Is it Paul? It is Paul. Oh, oh. well done. <laughs> yeah, he writes a lot. He does. He yeah. did Romans too, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who was the first king of Israel? Saul. Correct. Ooh, Nelson's There's only so really, many biblical yeah, characters, eh? That's true. <laughs> Nelson is pulling out in front. It's the repeat names that get me. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, for this question, you can have um, multiple points. Oh. Name Ooh. any of the nine fruits of the spirit. Faithfulness. Do you want to try and steal some more Goodness. Yep. <gasps> the points keep going up. Patience. Yep. Kindness. Yep. Forgiveness. No. No, Stop really? There. I think you got like four to five points. Self-control. <laughs> yep. <gasps> Love. Yep. Joy. Yep. Peace. I yep. said joy. Patience. Yep. Kindness. Yep. Said patience. Goodness. Said kindness. Yep. <laughs> Faithfulness. Just Nelson's self stealing my points. Right, I think we've got one question for it to end this maybe tied game. Alrighty. <laughs> yep. Look at those numbers. Yeah, tied. Mine has a smiley face again. Oh. When David wanted to fight Goliath, <laughs> what did Saul try to give him? Bit of armor. Yes, correct. Oh, well, well done. done. Thank you. That Thank was you. a good game. Thank you. Um, I hope you oh. playing around at home also got some right. <laughs> and we'll see you all next time on Bible Trivia. Bye. Bye. All oh, discounts. So you're probably wondering what is going on in this corner. I mean, the last few weeks, you've seen our teachers for KTV stand right here and teach in front of the set. I mean, there was some caution tape here before and this sign as well. But for now, after that, what, what are we gonna do with this space? Well, you've seen what we created for our basement set on the other side of the studio. And, and while you can't see it right now, I'm looking at it from right here. So this is the other corner of the studio. Now I've got to try and figure out what I'm going to do with this space. Now it's a, it's a very tiny space, it's not very big, and we have to work with the dimensions that we've got here. But what I'm thinking of doing is building a new set piece that's gonna go in the corner here for our KTV team. Because we do a lot of great segments and we have a lot of fun here. And I wanna make sure that the sets that we're doing KTV on look just as fun and feel just as fun for you guys at home. But more than that, I wanna make sure that our guys who are on screen talent who are standing on the set, making sure that they've got something really great to interact with, really fun to stand on and in front of, and something that's gonna be super colorful and engaging for you guys. So, what kind of happens when I wanna build a set? Well, I don't just get up here and do nothing, do I? I need to create a design first because I've gotta make sure I've got the dimensions right, I've got enough of what I need, I get the right colors and the spacing and make sure it's gonna work on the camera. So here's what I do guys. When I design a set, when I build a prop piece, I always jump onto my iPad and I try to draw out my design first. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna show you the set design that I'm gonna put in this corner. I'm gonna show you how I came up with it on my iPad. Let's take a look. So what I need to do first is start off with an image of the space in the studio. Now this image is probably taking a little bit before where I was standing just a moment ago, but this is gonna be my starting point. Now, first of all, what I need to do is draw the wireframe of the shape and size of the set. This is gonna help me create a structure that's gonna sit on top of the set. So when I draw the set in the perspective of the picture, I can see how it's gonna look in real life. The next thing I wanna do is insert all the panels. Now these are the panels that I'm gonna to use to put on my set. Now right now they're blue, but that's just because I need to see the shape of them. If I just drew an outline, it'd be a lot harder to see. But these blue panels are eventually gonna form the structure of my design. In the middle of this set, what I'm wanting to create is a bit of a table that sticks out from the set that our hosts and our KTV talent and crew can rest things on during their segments. So they're not having to hold things forever, or they're not having to hide things off camera. They've got a bit of a table there that they can do on. Now here's where it gets cool. My idea for this set is I want it to be a lot of little doors, cupboard doors, closet doors, roller doors, folding doors, every little kind of door I can think of. So what I need to do first is just create a general layout 
of where each of these doors are gonna go, and maybe a, a little bit of an idea of the different sizes and shapes of these doors. Now I've gotta make sure that I get doors everywhere. If I don't cover the whole thing in doors, it's gonna look a bit weird. So I wanna make sure that I've got a door in every single free space on my set piece. And now that I have the general blueprint, <laughs> see what I did there, blue? Blueprint of my set and how it's gonna look, we need to add some color. Now, what I'm gonna add is might not be the final colors, but I wanna see what it'll look like if all the doors and all the different sizes are different kinds of colors. So what I'm thinking is I may use yellow as the background. I may decide when I'm actually building it that I wanna go with a different color for the base color of the set. But for now, in my design, it's yellow, and I'm gonna use my colors to color in all the different doors. So I can see that in my picture here that I'm designing, I can see what it's going to look like with a base color and multicolored doors all over the place. And when I'm done, you can finally see how this set piece is gonna turn out. I've got it here in the picture, so I can see what it might look like in real life, but I've also got a nice little piece I can use when I start to do up my measurements. Now I don't like to brag, but I think that's a pretty good drawing of what I'm gonna do. Now it's probably a little hard to tell how it's gonna look from here on the page, from my iPad, to how it's gonna look here on the wall. But I tell you what, I'll do another Don's Designs in a little, in a little while. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I built it. From what I drew here in my iPad, to how it's gonna look right here in the studio. So keep an eye out for that, it's gonna be exciting. I cannot wait to see this design come to life. I'm very excited. Until next time guys, have a good one. I am so excited about this next experiment. Nelson, what do we need for this one? Oh, water. You'll need water, water. and some detergent. Lots of detergent Lots of and detergent. Uh, some coat hangers or some round things. Coat hangers? Yeah. Oh. Oh, and like a vessel to put all yes. of that in. So, perfect. <laughs> well, we're going to make, you guessed it, bubbles. But giant. Giant bubbles. bubbles. Shall we try with the coat hangers first, Yeah, let's first, try with Nelson? the coat hangers. Now, remember with all science experiments, make sure you ask your mum and dad for help. True. And permission. Or forgiveness. <gasps> oh. How big a bubble can you make? Oh, bigger than yours. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wee. Sorry, Hannah. That's okay. Big bubble. Can you watch it as it like stretches out? It's amazing. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat it. Don't, Don't eat, eat the bubble. Surgeon. Well, Who's Hannah, Sophie? do you know why bubbles are formed? Is it the surface tension? Yes. Oh. Surface tension. Now, a pro tip from two bubble Ooh. master bubble makers. Um, you want to make sure there's <laughs> no foam on top. Yeah, you gotta get rid of all the foam, otherwise it breaks the surface tension and your bubbles won't form, I think. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's that right. That sounds right. Um, I reckon, Hannah, let's try making the biggest bubble we okay. can. Okay, I'm gonna stand inside the bubble. Oh. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Alrighty, all right. I've got my trusty gum boots on. Oh, there is water leaking into them, however. Let's see if we can get all the way up. <laughs> my feet are slowly filling with water and it is quite cold. Well, uh, I'll try to go into it. Oh my gosh, it's so cold. <laughs> How are we going? Our, our, our bubbles have come back. The bubbles have come back. Whoa. Whoa. It gets, Halfway up. It gets Maybe if I like... Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to keep trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see if you can make even bigger bubbles than we've made at your place. Whoa, that was a big one. That was a big one. Right, we will see you after teaching. Whoa. Oh. Today we're going to learn how God has created our minds to think of his greatness. Our know it verse for the series is, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10 verse 27. Today we're gonna to look at a story in the Bible of some people who loved and trusted God with their minds. When faced with a big challenge where it was easy to stay afraid and fearful, they stayed focused on God and trusted that he was greater than all things and that he would protect them when no one else did. In this story today, the Israelites had been set free from slavery in Egypt and were wandering in the desert. 
and on their way to get to the promised land. Moses sent some spies to have a look at what was ahead and told them to report back on what they found. Let's read from the book of Numbers 13 to 14. Moses sent some men to check out the land of Canaan. He said, see what the land is like. See whether the people are strong or weak. What kind of towns do they live in? How is the soil? Are there trees on it? The men went and checked out the land. They cut off a branch. They had grapes on it. Two of them carried it on a pole between them. At the end of 40 days, the men returned. The men reported to Moses and Aaron. They said, it really does have plenty of milk and honey, but the people are powerful. Their cities are very large. We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. Joshua and Caleb were two of the men who had checked out the land. They said, the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid. That night, the people of Israel grumbled. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land? We're going to be killed. The Lord replied, not all of you will enter the land. Caleb will enter it. So will Joshua. They are the only ones who will enter the land. I will bring your children in. As for you, you will die in the desert for 40 years and you will suffer. You see, while all of the other spies were afraid by what they saw, Caleb and Joshua chose to trust God's greatness and power by remembering God's character and promise and trusting that God would make a way for them to face the giants and make it to the promised land. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whether it is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. We can think of God's greatness by enjoying his creation, like we learned about last week. If God was big enough and powerful to create the whole world, we can trust him for everything. Another way we can use our mind is to think of God's greatness is by memorizing scripture. Why we always have a know it verse is because God's word is powerful. And when we find ourselves in tricky situations, we can call to mind God's promises and speak them over ourselves and remind us that God is with us and he is greater than all challenges we face. So our bottom line for today is, God has created me to think of his greatness. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can uh, read from your word, Lord. We thank you that you are greater than everything, Lord, and that your amazing creation, this world, uh, has been given to us and it has been such a blessing. Thank you, Lord, that we can learn about you and know uh, and trust in your name that, and, yeah, you can love us no matter what. In your mighty name, amen. Hi guys, we're back. One last experiment. And uh, one last epic creation. And uh, I thought for this one, we go big. We go big. We go big. We have been we going go big. This big. Whoa, what are yeah. we gonna do? Um, well, I was thinking about making some giant paper airplanes because you know, what, what better I epic thing so. than just throwing something and seeing it fly? So I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty good at making paper airplanes. How about you, Hannah? Uh, not great, but that's okay. That's all right. I'm going for what We're kind here of, for the fun. What kind of folding are you um, going for? I just fold until something appears. Oh, that is good. Do strategy. you want to explain to us how paper airplanes work? If we're successful? I'm going to be honest with you. I actually have no idea how things fly. I think it's a little bit mysterious and I kind of love that because some things, I think that should be another. <gasps> Hannah, that should be our next segment. What should it be? Will it fly? <laughs> Will it fly? <laughs> just throwing off the side of the building and hoping for the best? Yeah. Or like just naming things that fly? I think, I think um, Zach would be... Zach or Rachel would be all over that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can combine it with Zach's hacks and Zach's try hacks. and make things fly. Right. This is about... Oh, I, I like your wing design. <laughs> I'm going for aerodynamic. I think I've done mine wrong. But that's okay. You know what? We'll give it a shot and maybe it'll fly. Maybe it won't. Yeah. I think it's about the air pushing up on it, isn't it? Like that? Like flapping? I actually don't know what I've done. I don't well, even think it has wings um, anymore. I don't think we can 
throw paper airplanes very well in here, right? No, there's nowhere really high to go in here. The ceiling kind of is Stops in the it. way. So shall we yeah. head outside yes. and throw these off the building? Yes. Let's go. See you out there. Alrighty, we made it outside and we are wow. ready to throw our beloved planes off the stairs. Are you ready, Nelson? I'm ready, Hannah. It's been so fun. It has been so much fun. I'll count us in. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Ooh, look at it Ooh, go. Mine falls in oh, wow. Well, it's been so fun. <laughs> See you guys next See time. See you later. Bye. <laughs>